Welcome to this Commodore 64 basic tutorial or example. Uh, this is the first video like this that I've done and I don't want to uh, whittle on for too long about um, about things in general. I want to try and keep it to the code and to that end I might not explain things in as full of detail as possible and if that is the case and you'd like some further explanation just drop me a comment below and I'll, I'll get back to you but I wanted to be concise and uh, try and keep the time down so you don't lose interest too quickly. So what this example is, as you may have seen if you're looking at the source code in front of you on the screen, is a very simple rock, paper, scissors game. Okay, so we start off here at line 10 by printing the character represented by number 147. Now what is that? Well it's a it's a character that isn't just a isn't just a key that you'd press on the keyboard. Hence why after the print there could be a space here. There isn't in this example. Um, you know, put a space in if you like for, for readability. What will actually happen is the, the Commodore 64 will, will strip that out because it's not necessary. Um, that's what had happened here and is what happened um, elsewhere. You can see when I've pasted it from the Vice Commodore 64 emulator into, um, into this text editor, and the, you know, some of the spaces have been stripped out. So by printing CHR dollar sign number 147, we can print a, a character that isn't either isn't or isn't easily accessible. You know. Um, by, a, by a key press. So in this case, character 147 will clear the screen of all text. It won't change any sprites that might be displayed, um, but we're not using sprites in this example, so just have the effect of clearing the screen for us. We've got a nice blank page to work with. The very next line sets up a variable called CPU, and a variable is just a um, just some letters. You know, it can be a word or a mnemonic or a single letter that stores uh, a value. And in this case, we're going to store an integer, so a whole number. RND is the um, the basic interpreter directive for you know, to get a random number and we want that to be a random number between one and three because there are three possible outcomes or it's not three possible choices in rock paper scissors aren't there so once the uh, CPU has chosen its random number between one and three it stores it in the variable CPU and then at the end of this line after the colon now colon separate commands that are, are in a single basic line so um, I could just as, be, as easily put go sub 100 on the next line um, but I've chosen just to tack it on to the end here, and it just shows you. I've, I, I use elsewhere. You'll see um, colons to separate often similar commands on, on one line rather than taking up multiple lines. So let's quickly nip down to 100, where this go to subroutine 100 would send would send us. And starting here, we can see 100. We have three if statements, and then we return. Now the return directive sends the um, program or sends the basic interpreter or the, or the CPU back to just after the uh, the go sub command that, that sent, us to, sent us there in the first place. So once this return is hit, we'd be sent back to after the go sub 100. There's nothing more here. So we'd go into the next line and start executing from there. So anyway, so line 100 is an if statement. Well, they all are. And uh, so depending on what variable, sorry, what number has been stored in the CPU variable, one, two, or three, We'll then set up a, a create another variable called C, and it's a string as denoted by the dollar sign. And if one is in CPU, then the C string gets set to rock. If two is in the CPU, then the C string gets set to paper. Three will be scissors, and then we return. So right away, before anything is displayed on the screen, we'll clear the screen. Uh, but before any messages are displayed, with these print statements that I'll come to in a sec, um, the computer already has already made its decision. If you like, it's already chosen rock, paper, or scissors. So then, straight after, we print a welcome message and some simple instructions for playing the game. And you can see here that I've, I've separated um, these print statements just with a colon, just to fit all three on, on one line, or four, rather, on one line. Now, when it runs, you'll see that each one of these, the reason that it's not just one long print statement is because I wanted each one to be on a, on a separate line. Now, there's no obvious symbol here for, or character, for, um, doing a line feed and a carriage return, you know, the, the C64 basic interpreter and others, I'm sure, automatically add the in. So if it reads, if it prints, sorry, a string terminated just with a speech mark, um, it will automatically add in carriage return and line feed. So what you'll see when the program is running is that this R for rock, P for paper, S for scissors are all on separate lines, the one below the other, and then there's just a blank line left, left inserted for, yeah, just to make it look nicer. When it's displayed then the message press any other key to quit and leave another line and then we get into the first loop of the game 
uh, which is this on line 50. So we set up another string called p, a uh, string variable called p. In it, we put nothing, so it's just blank. Then we ask the user for input, so read a character, is what get does, into the p string. If no character has been pressed, so if the p string is still empty after this get command has run, has been run, then we go to 50, which is the line we're already on. So this line will loop over and over until a key is pressed. Now you can see from lines 60, 70, and 80, we're looking for the user to press R, P, or S to represent you know, their choice of either rock, paper, or scissors. So if we uh, if the user presses R, then we'll go to subroutine starting at line 200. If they press P, 300, S, we'll go to subroutine starting at 400. Okay, so let's have a little look down here. And it's right at this moment that I realize lines 140 to 160 will never get executed and shouldn't be there at all really. So when we return, you'll see I've just deleted those like nothing ever happened. Right, so if R is pressed, oh sorry, and if nothing is pressed, it's line 90, so sorry, not nothing, if something other than R, P or S is pressed, um, obviously none of these if statements will execute, but something, this we will break out of this loop because this, this P string will no longer be nothing. Um, but none of these ifs will execute, so we'll fall through here to the this print statement, which prints goodbye, and then colon end, and the end instruction just returns us to the ready prompt and ends the program gracefully. Okay, so if the user's pressed R, we'll be sent to line 200, which prints, you chose rock, I chose, but I've left the space after chosen the closing speech mark, and this semicolon here afterwards, that stops the line feeding carriage return automatically being being put in by the uh, by the computer. So what will happen is as it's as it's still part of the same print command, as it's still um, on the same line and there's no there's no colon, what will happen is that that semicolon removes the character return line feed and it will it will then print the contents of the C string. So it will be we don't know um, but it will be one of these you know whatever whatever value stored in CPU denotes which you know which um, word gets stored into the C string. So it'll say you chose rock, I chose. Now if that C string so happens to be rock, then it'll be then it will print the word draw. If it so happens to be paper, then you lose, the user loses because uh, paper beats rock. Scissors, then you win because rock beats scissors. Okay, and once that's done, um, there's no return. So really this go sub to 500 could have been a go to. Um, Either will work, and I've chosen I've chosen just to use um, use go sub in the, in this instance. So we'd go to go sub to 500, which would then print a blank line, print a message thanks for playing, another blank line, and then press Y to play again. And then 520 is, is an identical loop to line 50, where it'll just repeat. It'll set up a, a, a Q string with nothing in it. Ask for an input to the Q string. If it's blank, then it'll go. It'll just repeat the line over and over. If Y is pressed, then the program just goes straight back to the start, right to the very top, clears the screen and, and gets on with the game again. If anything otherwise is pressed, then um, the message goodbye, just like on line 90, is, uh, is displayed. And the program ends. So I'm going to show you now the game playing. I'm going to copy and paste this code into, into Vice, so you'll see that going in. See all the code being entered. And the game will run automatically because I've put this run and a carriage return at the bottom. So as soon as it finishes pasting, it automatically runs. So here we can see the Vice emulator. I'm just pasting the code in as you saw as we were just going through. And then automatically runs. Here we go. Welcome to Rock, Paper, Scissors. Press after Rock, Paper, Paper, S for Scissors. Any other key to quit? I chose Rock. And the computer chose Rock. So it's a draw. And I'm going to play it through a couple of times. So here I'm going to choose Paper. And I win because the CPU chose Rock. I'm going to play again and go with Scissors. See what happens. And a draw. So we both pick the scissors. So you can see, very simple game here. Um, let's see, rock and the future is paper, so there's a lose. So there we are. And I pressed another key here, so we just ended the program and got back to the ready prompt. So thanks for watching my first video. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment.